Hi, I'm Debbie and welcome to Book and Bujo, where I talk about all things books, bullet journals, and stationery. Today is my November TBR Opera How did I do in October? Pretty good, actually. I have a week left and I only have one book left to finish. Now, I mean, it is a little bit long, it's like a thousand pages, but I've already started it and I have a week left to read it. Shouldn't be a problem. So, let's find out how I did. My first roll was a book with an orange cover and for that I am currently reading Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan and that is the sixth, sixth book in the Wheel of Time series and I will have that finished by the end of the month. Next up was a spoopy book, and for that I read Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett, and that is the 19th book in the Discworld series. And a spoopy book is a spooky book that's not actually scary. So, next up, my third roll was uh, a double, of course, and it was Out of the Woods Yet, and that was a book with a forest setting or trees on the cover, and for that I read Primitive by Mark Nakainen. Next up, another double, and that was What a Ghostly Scene, so read a book with a haunting or ghosts, and for that I read The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu, and that is the first book in the Edinburgh Nights series, and I did finish that. Next roll, also a double. Of course it was a double, right? And I landed on Pumpkin Spice, so read a spicy book or one that is that you think you will really enjoy like you can't put it down. And that was The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie, and that is the fifth, fifth book in the First Law world and the second book in the set of standalones, kind of in between the two trilogies. Next up, yay, not a double, <laughs> and that was The Most Recent Purchase, and for that I read How to Take Smart Notes by Sanka Aaron, and that was also for the JNR book club. Next roll, also another double, of course, and that was to read a book with a green cover, and I read Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare, and that is the third book in the Last Hours trilogy, and I believe that means I am now all caught up on the Shadowhunter world with the books that have been released, except for the graphic novels that are out. I haven't gotten to those yet. Men, next role, was Out of the Woods Yet, again, and for that I read Return to Camp Solgahatia, and that is by Nasser Rabadi, and that is the second book in the Ravenhill Butcher series. And all of the books in the series are all based on the Ravenhill Butcher, but each of the books are standalones. So they're all about, those characters are pretty much only in the book, that book, and then the next book has its own set of characters and it's just the Raven Hell Butcher storyline kind of goes throughout all of them. So I did have the first book, which is The Christmas Morning Massacre. So I went ahead and read both of those because the first book was like 100, 100 pages and the second book was like 90 pages. So I went ahead and read both of those. And then next role was Mary Shelley, which was to read either a book by Mary Shelley or, and I've already read Frankenstein, which is the most popular one, or to read a sci-fi. And I did have another sci-fi that I needed to get to, and that was Grip, which is the second book in the Slip series by David Estes, and that is on my Want to Finish in 2023 series. My next role was Candy Corn, and that is to read a sweet book, and for that, I read Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson, and that was his third secret project book. Next up was Nothing Better Than Revenge. And for that, I read Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is the third book in the Book of the Ancestors series. And then TBR Vet, and I read The Vampire, A Tale, and that was by John Will William Paladin. That was really enjoyable. And then my... Last and final role was to read another spooky book, so kind of a spooky but not scary. And for that I read Hogfather, which I don't know at this point if that actually totally fit. I mean, actually it does. It does fit. Hogfather by Terry Pratchett, which is the 20th book in the Discworld series. 
So yes, now that I'm thinking about it, because it's it's kind of a Christmas-based book, but there is there is a mystery and thriller aspect to it. So I'm counting. I'm gonna count it. Okay, and I mean deaths involved, and because I think it's the book four in the death subseries. So I'm counting it as a spoopy book. So I completed my October TBR. I'm so excited about that, and. Hopefully I will have a wrap up for you <laughs> for September and October. I'm still trying to get caught up in my uh, writing my reviews for all the books I've read and I've read so many books the past few months and I'm hoping for November that I can slow down just a little bit and get caught up with some stuff. And also in that wrap up I want to be able to tell you about my New York trip which got cut a few days shorter than we had planned and ended up in some quarantining at the end so yeah stay tuned for my wrap up for that story <laughs> okay now for November so right, as you can see I have one book left to start which I'm actually starting today and I have a week left to be able to finish reading it. Otherwise, I have finished all of the books on my TBR. I'm so excited. So I will get that finished. I will, again, have a week to do it. And that means I get a reward. So let's see what we get. Double up on prompts. Well, that's awesome. So I can use the same book for multiple pro or two prompts. And I still have that I haven't used yet. I have the draw again to replace a prompt you don't want. I have a skip next punishment and swap out a prompt for a read along book. So, so since I completed my TBR, I get a reward. So the rewards I already had and I haven't used yet. So I still have a draw again to replace a prompt you don't want. And I have swap out a prompt for a read-along book and then I also have a skip next punishment and it may be a while before I do that one because I completed my TBR so I don't need that one. The reward I did draw this time was to double up on prompts. So if I have a couple of prompts that'll work for one book I may end up using that. We'll see. All right, so let's find out how many books I'm going to be reading in November. All right, so let's roll, get my 10-sided die, and we'll roll and find out how many books I will be reading in November. And that is an eight. So I have eight books, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so I rolled an eight, so eight books, that's doable. I'm okay with that. It's better than the 12, 13 books I had last month. So eight books it is. All right, roll number one. Five. So this is where I ended in September because in October we used Becca's Spookopoly board. So. This is where I ended in September, so that's where we'll, where we'll start. And so I've got one, two, three, four, and five. So that is an odd card. Read a book with a forest setting or trees on the cover. So my first roll was an odd card, and that was to read a book with a forest setting or a book with trees on the cover. And for this one, I've, I'm not quite sure if it has a forest setting. The prequel did, so I'm assuming there is a forest setting somewhere in the book, but there's also a tree on the cover. I mean, there's only one, but it's pretty full tree, so I'm going to count it. That is A Touch of Light by Tiago Adala, and that is the first book in the Ashes of Avarin series. A sprawling epic fantasy where religion and politics are one. Griffin riders roam the skies, and a looming blight threatens to tear everything down. 
How far would you go to resurrect someone you love? Would you change who you are to show you belong? The world of Avarin is tearing itself apart. The domain worships life, its rulers lead eternal lives, and death is a shame that must not be mourned. For the clans to the south, however, death is all that keeps the earth alive. The old enemies are rising. Sounds interesting, and I really enjoyed the prequel novella, so I'm excited to get into this one, plus it's continuing a series that I've already started. Roll number two. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is an even card. A big book, over 500 pages. All right, roll number two. That was an even card. And for that, it was to read a big book over 500 pages. So not too hard because most of my books are pretty big. But for that one, usually it sits right over here. But I let my mom borrow it. She just finished the first book in the trilogy and is starting on the second one soon so maybe we'll be able to read them together and that is Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson and that is the second book in the Mistborn Era 1 series. Very excited to reread that series. Roll number three. Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that is another odd card. Read a book with a dragon on the cover. All right, next roll, I again landed on an odd card, and that was to read a book with a dragon on the cover. Now, I have a lot of books that I could choose for this prompt. It was really hard to narrow it down because I still want to read Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill. I want to read The Ice by Ron Ca Ryan Cahill. Both of those have dragons on the cover. I have quite a few books on my TBR. Or, um, I have quite a few books on my Kindle that also have dragons on the cover. I want to get to the second book in Samantha Shannon's The Priory of the Orange Tree series, the prequel one. I have that on here. But I decided to go with a book that also fulfills a prompt on the R Fantasy Bingo Board, and that is Ascendant by Mark Michael R. Miller, and this is the first book in the Songs of Chaos series. And I actually got the next two books and one of the novellas that goes with it, so definitely want to get into this series now. Holt Cook was never meant to be a dragon rider. He has always served the Order Hall of the Crag dutifully, keeping their kitchen pots clean. Until he discovers a dark secret. Dragons do not tolerate weakness among their kin, killing the young they deem flawed. Moved to pity, Holt defies the order, rescues a doomed egg, and vows to protect the blind dragon within. Sounds really interesting, and I am looking forward to, of course, it's starting a new series, but it's one that I've wanted to read for quite a while now, so I'm very excited to get into it. Roll number four. We have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. A nonfiction. So roll number four, I landed on the nonfiction space. And for that, I'm going to read one that I've had on my Amazon borrows for a little while. And I've heard quite a few people talking about it. It's one that's been interesting enough to me to keep it on my TBR. And that is Master Your Emotions. And that is by, not quite sure how to say it, but uh, Tabo Maurice. I'm interested to fi find out a little bit more about mastering my emotions. Have you ever thought about your thoughts? Do you have a bias toward the negative? Understanding how negative feelings and emotions work is the first step. Then we must learn how to reprogram those emotions and turn them around. A happier life is possible if you follow the steps. So it sounds interesting. So I'm typically an optimistic person overall, usually fairly bubbly and smiley, although I do fall into the trap of negative self-talk. So I'm usually very positive with the world around me and people around me, but when it comes to myself, I can be very negative inside talking to myself. I'm interested to see their perspective and see their take on mastering your emotions. 
We're chugging right along. Roll number five. We have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Another odd card. Randomize your TBR. Roll number five was another odd card, and that was to randomize my TBR. And I will insert the clip here. For... So as you can see, I have 5,866 books on my TBR list. So let's go ahead and put that in my random number generator. And let's see what I get. So that's the number it was on when I pulled it up. So 52.59. So let's go ahead and scroll up. Fifty-two fifty-nine, almost there. And that is the Watchman's Daughter, the Watchmaker's Daughter, Glass and Steel Book One by C. J. Archer. All right, so I landed on five thousand two hundred and fifty-nine, and that is. The Watchmaker's Daughter by C.J. Archer, and this is the first book in the Glass and Steel series. I've had this one on my Amazon Borrows for a long time as well, uh, probably close to a year, so I really need to get this read. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy that this one came up. India Steele is desperate. Her father is dead, her fiancé took her inheritance, and no one will employ her despite years working for her watchmaker father. Indeed, the other London watchmakers seem frightened of her. Alone, poor, and at the end of her tether, India takes employment with the only person who will accept her, an enigmatic and mysterious man from America, a man who possesses a strange watch that rejuvenates him when he's ill. Yes, I'm very intrigued. I want to know more. Roll number six. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Amazon borrows. So roll number six, I landed on Amazon borrows, which is kind of fun. That'll make three Amazon borrows in a row. <laughs> and let's see what book I'm choosing. All right, so let's go ahead and roll my 10 sided die and figure out which Amazon borrow I will be reading. And that is a six. All right, so I got a six. And that was The Secrets of Alleberg, and that is by Greg Walters. And this is the first book in the Alleberg University series. This one has not been on my TBR very long, though. Uh, just a couple months. A hideous beast with glowing red eyes ambushes Bryn on his way home through the forest. After a narrow escape, the 16-year-old must flee with his foster father, Gerald, to the only place that promises safety. Alleberg University, where humans, dwarves, elves, and orcs come together to study the colors of magic. Bryn soon discovers he can use all three magical colors, which renders him powerful and dangerous at the same time. Will he learn to channel his powers with the help of his unlikely new friends and secure peace for the land? Or will he become the one who spells out doom for the enlightened nations of Razaklan? Sounds interesting. It's also quoted as being Harry Potter mixed with Lord of the Rings. Love both of those series, so I'm excited to give this one a try, see what it's like. And it has a map. I always like that. Oh, it's a forest setting too. Maybe I could double up on this one. Hmm. Now, I still want to read Touch of Light, so. Roll number seven. Four. Ooh. Looks like the dice are gonna be nice to us. One, two, three, four. So that's an even card. And that is to read a J.R.R. Tolkien book, which I think I spelled wrong. I think it's I-E-N. I'll have to fix that. Roll number seven was an even card. And that was to read a J.R.R. Tolkien book. And I did correct the spelling of it. So it's, it's on there right now. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Tolkien. And that I I'm started to get more into some of his more, uh, his lesser known works because I've already read, you know, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, The Similarian, some of those. So 
let's see what else we got. So I was going through some of the ones I still have and I thought this one was a good good one to jump start the holiday season and winter time and I will be reading Letters from Father Christmas and that is by J.R.R. Tolkien and this one is a much shorter book it's about 125 pages and I look forward to reading some of his non Lord of the Rings books. Can you imagine writing to Father Christmas and actually getting a reply? For more than 20 years, the children of J.R.R. Tolkien received letters from the North Pole from Father Christmas himself. They told wonderful stories of mischief and disaster, adventures and battle, how the reindeer got loose and scattered presents all over the place, how the accident-prone polar bear climbed the North Pole and fell through the roof of Father Christmas's house, and many others. All right, roll number eight, last and final roll. Oh, of course. Doubles. Double sixes. All right. 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Booktuber wreck. All right. Roll number eight. We couldn't go a full game without getting at least one double, right? <laughs> so we got a double, <laughs> which is great. It's fine. And that one I landed on Booktuber Wreck. And for that, I will be reading Jingo, which is the 22nd book in the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. A weathercock has risen from the sea of Discworld, and suddenly you can tell which way the wind is blowing. A new land is surfaced, and so have old feuds. And as two armies march, Commander Vimes of Ankh-Morpork City Watch has got just a few hours to deal with a crime so big that there's no law against it. It's called war. He's facing unpleasant foes who are out to get him. That's just the people on his side. The enemy might be even worse. And his pocket disorganizer says he's got to die under things to do today. But he'd better not because the world's cleverest inventor and its most devious politician are on their way to the battlefield with a package that's guaranteed to stop a battle. Discworld goes to war with armies of sardines, warriors, fishermen, a squid, and at least one very camp follower. Roll number nine. Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Buzz Wordathon. And then roll number nine, our last and final roll. I landed on Buzz Wordathon, which is good because I got to do that one anyway. And the word for December is good. And she will accept, like, if it's goodness or goodbye something like that but I did find I did find one that was just good and that is good to great and that is by Jim Collins this is a book that's been recommended to me by many of my colleagues and co-workers and I'm finally going to get to it it's been a couple years but finally going to read it to find the keys to greatness, Jim Collins' 21-person research team read and coded 6,000 articles, generated more than 2,000 pages of interview transcripts, and created 384 megabytes of computer data in a five-year project. The findings will surprise many readers, readers and, quite frankly, upset others. The challenge, built to last. The defining management study of the 90s showed how great companies triumph over time and how long-term sustained performance can be engineered into the DNA of an enterprise from the very beginning. But what about the company that is not born with great DNA? How can good companies, mediocre companies, even bad companies achieve enduring greatness? And that's my TBR, only nine books. What am I gonna do with all the time I have? <laughs> I know, I'm going to be writing reviews for all the books I read in August, September, and October. So I'm still working on my August reviews. I only have a handful of those left. I've already started a little bit on my September and some of my October reviews, but I, I, I will get there. So what is on your TBR? I would love to find out what you're reading. And if you play a game or if you mood read through the month, uh, do, you, do you tend to like... A roll as you go kind of concept like Becca does with her book Obli a lot of times. She'll do one roll, read that book, do another roll, read the book, do another roll, read the book, and see how many you can get done in a month. Or do you like to have a set TBR and then choose from the list and kind of mood read from the list as you go? I, I, I'm more on that road. I, I like to have a set TBR. These are the books I want to read and then I kind of mood read from there and I hope there's not too much on there so then I can add a couple of books at the end, which I haven't been able to do lately because I've had so many books in my TBR. I haven't had 
been able to just kind of fun read. <laughs> um, not that it's a trudge getting through the books on my TBR because they're all fun and I love them all. Yeah, which way do you like to go? All right, what else do I have? Book clubs. But I still have four book clubs that I'm participating in. The first one is the Howling Howling Pack, and that is with The Wild Sasha. And we are reading The Luminous Dead, and that is by Caitlin Starling. Next up is the JNR Book Club, and we are reading Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Gerber. Now the Backlist Book Club, we just finished the Book of the Ancestors trilogy, and I have not heard yet if we're gonna be doing another book. So the Backlist Book Club is with covers with Cassidy, and once she posts her video about what the next book series is going to be that we will be reading, I will let you know, and I'll add that to my TBR at the end. And then the Catch-Up Book Club with Becca and the Books, we are up to the sixth book in the First Law World, or the third standalone book in the series. And that is Red Country by Joe Abercrombie. Readathons. So I'm not participating in, in any readathons this month at all. Uh, I want to just clear my palette and just be ready for December readathons. So G at Book Roast always has something to do with Aurelium Academy and her Aldia world, the world of Aldia. And so I'm excited to, to take part in whatever that will end up being. And then I also do the 12 books of Christmas and the 12 movies of Christmas, which usually turn out into like 24, because I usually start in November and I watch 12 plus different fun rom-com holiday movies, as well as classics like White Christmas and It's a Wonderful Life and some of those. So I want November to just be easy, get caught up in some stuff, maybe work ahead a little, catch up, all that kind of stuff. So that will be November. So no readathons. <laughs> Except for the two year-long year readathons that I participate in, which is Buzzwordathon with Books and Lala. And that, again, is good to great because the word is good, and that's good to great. It's by Jim Collins. And then A Year in Aldia, or Adventures in Aldia, where it's the year-long readathon. And for, and this is the map. So we're in October, which is this line here, which I haven't colored in, but uh, both my characters have completed those. And so now we're up to these ones here. So Karasu deciphered an ancient scroll. Chapters have titles, which was The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. So I read that one in October. And so for November, he's got two choices. He can either use a transformation spell and read a mystery or thriller, or he can apply an odd glyph to his conduit and use a random number generator. So he could go with random number generator because we already have the watchmaker's daughter where we had to randomize my TBR. But to double up on one of the book club books, we're gonna go with mystery thriller and read The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. And then for Ariel, she stargazed and read a book with stars on the cover, and that was Hogfather by Terry Pratch, which is the 20th book in the Discworld series. So now she can either visit Old Favor Pass, read a book with a winter setting, or go on a rescue quest and read a book that is at risk of an unhaul. And since I don't actually have any books, that are at risk of being unhauled, she's gonna go ahead and visit Old Favor Pass and read, read a book with a winter setting. And that will be Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. Okay, now let's move on to read-alongs. So we have the Cosmere read-along with Elliot Brooks and we're up to a reread of Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. For Discworld, we're up to Jingo and the Last Continent, which is the 21st and 22nd book in the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. And the Discworld read-along is with Literary Diversions. 
And then the Wheel of Time read along with Sandra from Got a Thing for Things. We are up to Lord of Chaos, which is the sixth book in the Wheel of Time series, which is actually the book I'm currently reading for October. So I won't have to read a book for the Wheel of Time read along in November. And then for the A to Z challenge. So we're getting really close. I only have November and December left to finish my A to Z challenge. And luckily I only have one letter left and that is the letter U. So I'm trying to find books that actually start with a U, don't necessarily have the in front. So my thought is I can read Under the Strawberry Moon by Melanie Karsak and that is the prequel novella to The Road to Valhalla. And I read the first book in the series, A Shield Maiden, and that was so good. I really enjoyed it. So I'm interested to see what the prequel novella is like before I get to the rest of the series. And it's somewhat short and it starts with a U. And I do really want to get to that one, but the book I really, really, really want to read, which actually is another Amazon borrow, so this must, November must be the month of Amazon borrows. And that book is The Umbral Storm, and that is by Alec Hudson, and it is the first book in the Sharded Few series. So I really, really want to read this one. I mean, it does start with a the, and it's a lot longer. So I'm gonna play this one by ear. I'm hoping to get to this one, but if I get to the end of the month and I really need a shorter book to complete the challenge, I will go with Under the Strawberry Moon. <laughs> but if I have time, then I will go with The Umbral Storm because I do really wanna read this one. And then that gives me a chance to kind of clear out four of my Amazon borrows and I can get four more new ones in there for next year, which would be great. Are you reading or have you read any of the books that I'm reading on my TBR? And if so, let me know down in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts on the books and if you're super excited to read them or if it just came up on something and you, you're stuck with it. <laughs> Are you excited for November? Uh, Thanksgiving is actually one of my favorite holidays. My dad is a twin and they never lived in the same state, so my my dad used to call us, like their voices are identical. So my dad used to call us and we'd be like, oh my gosh, yay, it's, a, it's our uncle. And then we'd be like, wait, this is dad. <laughs> so they weren't in the same state to be able to uh, trick us uh, by visuals because they do look identical as well. Uh, but so they used to do the phone call thing to trip us up, which was kind of funny, but at the time it was really annoying because we really wanted to talk to our uncle, which we did get to, but yeah. So Thanksgiving used to always be a time that we would spend with my uncle and either he would come to us or we would come to him. And that would be, that was our tradition for Thanksgiving for quite a few years. And I think the first year we weren't able to do that, I was just devastated. I was still somewhat young. I was probably, I don't know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, somewhere right in there. And, and I was just so sad that we didn't get to spend Thanksgiving with our uncle because that was what Thanksgiving was to me. It was spending it with some of our specific family members. Uh, and now Thanksgiving as growing up, it was more about doing music and going multiple places. So to me, it was more Thanksgiving is all about friends, extended family. So Thanksgiving is all about being thankful and grateful for everything you have in your life, all the people you have in your life, all your friends and your family, and just getting to go out and share the love with all of those around you. So what is your favorite holiday? I'd love to find out down in the comments. Let me know. And if you made it this far, go ahead and leave a turkey emoji in the comments or a turkey leg. Do they have a little turkey leg down there? That'd be great too. Uh, some form of a turkey down in the comments in honor of Thanksgiving for the month of November. And please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other videos from me. And until next time, keep reading. Bye.